such an expectation born of the word enlighten. There's often an association and when we reach this enlightened or awakened state, the world just becomes like heaven and we just just walk around like saints glowing and everything we touch heals and and we stop eating and we start walking on water and 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 healing the blind and just everything gravitates towards us and everything everybody sees us as love and we just love everything and very often it's also we people assume that you become enlightened and you become so loving you attract the most loving person into your life and so you can see there's so much, there's, you hear these, these questions and they're always coming from a separate self because the self doesn't ask what happens when I become awake because the self is always awake. So recognize always that in the true you, the real you, the real authentic you, the, the true essential you, the essential, take all the non-essentials away, the essential you, the true self, the divine self, the Holy Son of God self, the I am, is fully away. And in that state, there is nothing to do but just be that, fully aware. But the separate self poured itself into this dream illusion in order to know itself, to make known the forgotten, to remember the I am. And when the separate self recognizes the I am for the recognition to happen. The separate self must have dissolved because the separate self is limited. It's the limited mind. The I am is the infinite mind of God's Holy son, which is one with the infinite unlimited mind of God. So let's, for the sake of this explanation, let's say that God's mind is pure consciousness. The sun has fallen asleep and dreamt the dream of the universe, dreamt the dream of separation. When a part of the sun woke up, and let's call that part of the sun, Jesus wakes up and becomes the awakened part of the mind, Christ mind. As Jesus becomes Christ mind, the dreamer, the son of God, a part of him awakens. And that part is the I am, the realization. So the awakening of the son of God's mind is called consciousness or conscious awareness. So God is pure consciousness. The son is awareness. The awakened part of the son's mind is conscious awareness. Is that just, just to bring it into scales? There's no scales. It's all se seamless. As for the sleeping part of the mind, it's unconscious awareness. So as human beings, we're unconsciously aware. We're aware of People, places, things, and events, but we're not aware of the consciousness of self. When the self calls, what it does is it calls through the separate self. It calls you back to reveal, to know the self as I am. And when the self is known, the separate self dissolves. But we're still in form. So the minute we want to get back into activity, the awareness then focuses on the people, places, things, and events, on the separate self-activities. But the connection with the I am is now made. It's now been brought into awareness. And so it's awareness that is aware of itself, now aware that it's poured into activity, poured into activity to, to get to know itself. Now that it knows itself as the self, as the I am, it pours into the activity, but in the awareness that the I am is the true self. Now pause into activity and pause with compassion and love into activity, fully realized as the self. This is awakening. That is enlightenment. You've now shed light on what was once forgotten. The light has now come light is awareness. The light has come as awareness. I'm now aware that I'm aware. I am that I am. And when I recede and just rest in that place, I am. When I allow the focus to disappear from the world, 
I simply know I am. And I'm now lit by the anointed Christ mind. I'm fully present in a most joyful, peaceful, loving state as awareness, as I am. That is awakening. But since we're still in form, and since we're still characters in the dreamer's mind, we don't just dissolve and disappear. Because for the mind, the dreamer to fully awaken, all dream characters have to awaken in the light of its awareness, of the awareness of I am. And so we are now, we have chosen as separate selves to make known the forgotten. And now that we're here, we then offer this projection, this physical device to God's Holy Spirit. We now offer this to the voice for God as we choose to be a voice for the voice for God. So we choose to become an instrument of God's love, joy, and peace an instrument of the essential nature of the self, I am. We choose to now serve through our essential nature. And since we have this vessel, we now choose to pour ourselves compassionately into the world. So what does it look like? It looks like every other day. What happens to the character? The character, the personality, the id, the identity, which was once upon a time in time, fully solidified as a separate self, as a separate self, body, mind, identity, as a person, a job, a career, a title and function, no longer sees itself that way. It knows itself to be the self, the I am. So what happens is the identity, all those pressure points, those pain body pressure points, those pain mind pressure points, separate body mind pain points have now become desensitized. So our ego isn't triggered by activities in the world. When people say things that would have in the past hurt that separate body mind, upset that separate body mind, it no longer gets triggered. There's no more reaction. It simply watches in benevolent, silent observation. It realizes it is attached to everything in the universe because everything stems from the mind of the Son of God dreaming. And since you are a part of that mind, you are the dreamer too. So it realizes I am fully connected to everything, but it's no longer attached to any, no longer attached to any outcome. It offers of itself fully, compassionately to the world. It wants to serve through its natural, essential nature. We call that our passion, what we're passionate about in the world. It wants to pour in through its passionate activity, but it no longer is attached to anything. So it once used to make very detailed plans and try and plan and control everything. It may still plan, especially if it's in a planning role, but the plan is always made in the present now. It doesn't sit and worry about the future. It always stays present in the now and activates the plan. And so what you'll find as, as the awakening has taken place, there'll now be a gradual, gentle undoing, which is a glad exchange between what was once very important to the separate self and now what is known as to be the only truth from the true divine self. There's a glad exchange. And so everything gets done from a place of unconditional love. It's done from a place of choosing to serve as opposed to doing things in order to gain acceptance, gain love, gain recognition, gain self-worth, gain love through self-worth, accolade, people, places, things, and events, needing to be loved, okay, as opposed to realizing I am love, and I now share the love I am with all that I am, even as a parent, separate characters in the dream. It's all me. It's all I am. And I now just choose to share this, but hold the position hold the consciousness of that I am and always be the light, staying centered in the self. Everything I do is always aware of being aware, aware of being I am, even though I now pour through what appears to be my separate body self into the world. But I'm doing this simply as an act of compassion and love. I now choose to be an instrument of peace, be an instrument of love. And so, Life after awakening from the outside may look 
very normal. It may look like very little has changed. If you're in a marriage, you're in a marriage. If you're in a relationship, you're in a relationship. You realize everything is there to serve the continuous remembrance of I am. And you now choose to be a symbol and a voice for the voice for God. But on the outside, it appears exactly the same. The identity, the character starts to dissolve. The, the pain doesn't come out anymore. It doesn't, you don't speak and you don't hear the pain coming out. You don't hear the regrets. You don't hear the, uh, the vengeance, the, you know, the attack. There's no more. It's pure defenselessness. And if a defensive thought or word pops up, you catch it very quickly and realize that didn't sit well. You don't, you don't stay there. You don't now beat yourself up. You don't go into beating yourself up and guilt and remorse over it. You just clear it and you just stay present. And gradually, it's a very gentle, gentle pull. You'll see you start to soften and soften and soften. And the love becomes present in you all the time. You, you'll just be smiling all the time. And you'll notice people are smiling back at you all the time. You, you'll, you'll catch yourself noticing people are smiling at you. And, and people will approach you and just they want to talk to you. And they'll, they'll want to, those, especially those that are at peace with themselves, they want to touch you and they want to be in your proximity. Even with COVID, masks on, you'll see some people just want to come and stay near you and just want to be around you. And they'll be staring at you in ways that you haven't noticed before. People didn't look at me like that before. They're not looking at you with lustful eyes or desirous eyes. They're just looking at you with, you see the compassion. You see the love. You feel the love. You, you, you're aware that they, there's just total acceptance. I mean, true unconditional love is total acceptance of what is. Completely accepting someone else as they are. Be as you are. Come as you are. Come to me as innocent little children. Jesus' words in, in the New Testament. Let them come to me as innocent children. And they come to you in full innocence. And there won't be any storytelling. And if you do use a story, use a story to convey a message, not to tell your story, especially not your pain body story, stories of woe, hero of the dream. Whatever story you use, your, your own reference, you use to bring through understanding. You use, you, you, you use storytelling to bring through forgiveness or understanding of forgiveness, to bring through the awareness of self. And so life continues, but it continues with a conscious awareness of the joyous, peaceful self. And so the idea of suffering dissolves. You may experience pain, you bump your knee, you knock your head, you know, you burn your hand on a hot plate. Pain's still there, but it's no longer suffering. You no longer be screaming at why me? Why is God doing this to me? It's some sort of karmic retribution. What have I done wrong? What have I done to, pun to deserve this punishment? You won't see suffering. You may experience pain, um, but you'll realize that that pain dissolves in the light of awareness too because you become presently conscious here and now eternally. You join with the self, which is one with God, which is the essential nature of God as the self. And life just becomes a blessed occasion. And I speak from my own experience. Um, <clears throat> It just somewhere along the line changed into this non-judgmental, beautiful, present state of being, the lightness of being. What was once the unbearable lightness of being becomes the joyous lightness of being. And you wake up looking forward to how do I serve? It is an experience I wish upon everyone in this world.